Somebody say this sex thing. And uh, you see, every time we talk about sex in church, it looks very ugly, very distasteful. And uh, it looks like something we should avoid, but we can't because it matters. If you help me, say yes. yes. And uh, believe me, every human being thinks about sex. Are you with me? Yeah. I'm mostly everybody above 13. You didn't hear me. Yeah. The moment poverty comes and you begin to develop, you think about it more often than before. So any one of you here that tells me you don't think about sex, uh, you are closer to hell than I know. <laughs> are you hearing me? So I know you don't think about it. And the truth is that God actually created the sex organs and programmed their sexual sensations. It wasn't Satan that created sex. So you are not hearing me. Can you imagine God when he was creating man, sitting down to form that thing? What was he thinking? On oh, no, well. What was God thinking? Eh? He was thinking about chopping life, right? <laughs> okay, so it was God that created the sex organ. And all the sensations that go with it, he put it there. It wasn't the devil. Are you still here? Yes, I got to realize there's nothing new being discovered about sex. Everything that looks like new to you now has been there since the primitive times. It's not a new thing. You're not hearing me. Yes. See, the world is running around now talking about homosexuality. Do you remember that in the days of Lot... Sodom was known for homosexuality. So it's not a new thing. Are you here? When the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife, does it mean Adam just found out her name is Eve? Eh? It means Adam explored his wife. Are you okay? Uh, uh, if you want to know Nigeria, won't you explore Nigeria? It was a voyage of discovery. He went on a voyage of discovery. When he finished, he found out he had a baby. And he called the name Ken. So the baby Ken. Are you with me? You read later again when the Bible said, and Isaac was sporting with his wife. And Abimelech looked through the window and saw them because he had an upstair. It wasn't the Olympics they were doing. Are you with me? Sporting with his wife was not Olympic Games. Come on, are you with me? Now, sex has been a problem for long. You remember in the Bible when Diana was raped? That means rape has been there for thousands upon thousands of years. Can you imagine Moses in those days? More than 6,000 years ago, putting laws in the Bible against adultery. That means even in those dark ages, people were still committing adultery. You are not hearing me. So that means that whatever you are seeing today is not new. It's been there all this while. But even though it's been there all this while, the plan and purpose of God concerning life has not changed. God does not change by generation. Are you hearing me? Yes. God will not loosen up because a new generation came. Because what you are seeing, others have seen. Your generation is not different. They didn't recreate men and recreate women. It's the same body parts that's been there since Adam that is there now. You are not hearing me. If you undress now and if you look at you, you can't say, I didn't have that part, I didn't have that part too. God, when did you add that one to women? Are you hearing me here? Everything that you have, if has it. Are they hearing me? There's nothing different. 
And for many of you here that think that sex is okay, if I go to as many persons as possible, there's no different hole. It's the same hole in the woman. If you meet 20 women, it's the same hole. There's none that all has a conditioner. <laughs> Are you hearing? There's nothing they put in there. They didn't put massager inside. It's the same thing. So stop being stupid and settle down. Am I talking to somebody here? The same thing, the same thing for women. There's nobody whose own is different. You see one thing like this. That's all. There's nothing. There's nothing in any man. You are not hearing me. The muscle doesn't get there. It may have a baby. It doesn't reach there. Education doesn't reach there. His face doesn't reach there. Man na man. Nothing added to another man. Whether it's preacher or member, all na man. So stop deceiving yourself thinking there's a thrill better than you can get. That's a problem with people that are sexual addicts. You're not hearing me. That somebody is looking beautiful doesn't mean there's anything you're going to get from her more than any other person. In sex, body doesn't count. How you look doesn't count. No, you're not hearing me. There's nobody's body you can worship. No matter how well dressed somebody is, in sex, you still undress. You people are quiet. Can I talk to you here? So all of this stupidity that is shocking you, don't, let it, let, don't die for nothing. Don't die for nothing. And all this sex, 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 sex we are talking about, can I, can I tell you sincerely? Eh? According to medical science, all of this thing now, uh, I lasted for 14 hours. Na lie. The average sexual time doesn't last for 10 minutes. So there's nothing you're enjoying that others don't know. All of these, they know my own. Ah! Na lie. You are watching film. I am trying to take this away from you because since you are small, they kept perpetual fantasy in your head. So you go to this girl, you didn't have the experience you thought. You go to the other one, you didn't have the experience you thought. You go to the other one, you didn't have... You are still waiting to have that experience where you will be on heaven. From now till you die, it won't happen. The same thing for many women. The one, the one that their leg and hand will be tingling. Wait, Jesus is coming soon. Turn the fire queen soon. All the nonsense they planted in you. From the time you were small, reading romance novels and all of that. All those actors and actresses you saw that acted it on Hollywood. How many have their wives? How many have their husbands? How many are having marriages that are working? How many have relationships that are working? Every day they are divorcing and getting another. Because they are still hunting for that holy grail. And there is no holy grail. And the moment you buy into that propaganda and you buy into that mental slavery and manipulation, you become a slave of sex for life. Ephesians 5 verse 3 in the message translation. He said, don't allow love to turn into lust. Setting off a downward slide into sexual promiscuity. Fear the practices of bullying greed. Don't allow love tend to lust. Setting off a downward slide into sexual promiscuity. Fear the practices of bullying greed. So it's you that can allow it. Satan won't impose it on you. And no man will impose it on you. So you make up your mind to get the sex thing right. I'll talk to you about a few things and then we'll start closing today. We'll continue next week. Would that be okay? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. First thing I want to say to you is this. There is a spiritual and emotional bonding that goes with sex. There's a spiritual and emotional bonding that goes with sex. In 1 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18. 1 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18. It says, what? 
Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. It didn't mean harlot there. doesn't mean you went to uh, stand by a GRA. It means if you are running around with somebody in sexual immorality, you are joining one flesh with somebody who is not obedient to God's covenant. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Keep going. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against what? 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 Can I ask you a question? Eh? Everybody look at me. Can I ask you a question? Can you bear for your body to be against you? If you can bear, continue your journey. If you cannot bear for your body to feel like you hurt it, you sinned against it. For you and your body to be in enmity, your soul, your spirit, and your body to be in enmity, then calm down. That's why the one who created sex is telling you, be careful. Tell your neighbor, be careful. Be careful. Do you know that when we talk about soul tie, that soul tie wasn't originally demonic? No, 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 no. So tie was meant to bind people in relationship and make their union sweeter and longer lasting. It was originally a God plan. But then the devil corrupted it. Have you heard of the issue of the blood of virginity? Huh? Do you know why God put a high man in a woman? It's not because he protects infection. It's not because there's anything there. It's like when you have a car and they have waterproof on the car. What is the job of waterproof? Eh? What does waterproof do in the car? It has no job. Hello? It's just to announce this is new. Come on, talk to me. It's just a rapid. No, no. When the God put high men in the body, do you know why? So that at the first penetration of a woman, there will be blood. It's supposed to be for blood covenant. Because within the sperm of every man are drops of blood. Dr. Dara is here. She's a medical consultant. Are you with me? She can within the sperm of every man, there are drops of blood. And then the woman opens up and you're penetrating. The first penetration, blood comes out. It's supposed to be the mixture of two lives. That binds you in one union. That's why he said the two becomes one. So, you gave your own to somebody somewhere. <laughs> what did I go do now? I go go come out and back. <laughs> he don't give up. If you're here, say yes. There are some of you here that come in here now. You bring out your hand. He says, I never marry. I never marry. I never marry. In God's equation, you have been married 27 times. 27 different men. 27 different women. As you are appearing, different spirits are following you. You may look like a joke, but that's what spiritually your life looks like. And if you don't deal with it, it will keep multiplying. You say, no, nah, I don't believe that. What you believe doesn't matter. Truth is truth. If you don't believe there's a place called America, will you make America cease to exist? Truth is truth. If you're here, say yes. yes. So please, understand that there's a spiritual and emotional bonding that goes with sex. How many of you notice here that the moment you start a relationship and the sexual component comes, your ability to discern the other party is lost? Huh? Huh? That's why when young people start cutting or they start dating and they start sleeping together, to make rational decision goes. They see problems, they see fault, they just cover it and carry on. Because even when you make up your mind, I'm not going to talk to her again. I'm not going to talk to him again. I'm going to stop this. The day he comes, he grabs you again, throw on the bed, wham. <laughs> and by the time you get out of the bed, you forget your decision. They are not hearing me. 
<laughs> you know I'm a good pastor. <laughs> and my job is to take you to where you are going. And as long as I'm alive, nothing will stop you from getting there. I will talk to you in clear terms. You see, many of you are engaged. You are with the wrong person. The character doesn't fit. The lifestyle doesn't fit. Nothing fits. And you know it in your Noah. But because you are sexually involved. And you are getting those sexual benefits from the person. Being able to stand your ground and say this is a journey that will lead to death. That will lead to destiny accident. You are not able to make that. Why? There's an emotional bonding that goes with sex. Careful. Back off before it's too late. If you had my voice, say yes. yes. Let's take the second point for time's sake. Casual sex goes without commitment and diminishes your ability to bond well in marriage. Casual sex goes without commitment and diminishes your ability to bond well in marriage. If you find a girl who is being used to sleeping around as a single girl, having all kinds of friends and dating all kinds of people and all of that, when she gets married, settling down with one man is a problem. You are not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Settling down with one man is a problem. So you saw that girl who is used to doing runs. She schooled in the campus and she had a car. Big girl, big girl, small girl, big God, you know. You get what I'm talking about. She had a car. And the senator will fly her to the US. Governor will fly her to Dubai and all of that. She finished all the rendezvous. And then she's now 35. And she's still looking very neat and nice. And then you met her. And you thought you found something. And because she's in church answering sister, you quickly propose. And you drag her to the altar. And we pray for you. And she gets back home. And the next week, you bring, you bring out your Volkswagen. She enters the Volkswagen and she's going away. She shakes her head when she sees one big Land Rover pass. He said, Kai, he said, We didn't reduce me like this. <laughs> if we it's over. Are you hearing me? The same thing for young men. People that are used to all of this, listen, do you know that sex can be an addiction? Huh? Are you hearing me? Have you had some young ladies that are in a relationship and the young man say, well, they say, I've been telling you to give to me. You don't want to give to me. If you don't give me, I'll go for another person. No. If he cannot control himself now, he can't control himself when your body changes. It won't happen tomorrow. Self-control is not something that you just develop because you're married. Is anybody hearing me here today? That man will travel. That woman will travel. I don't know if you're with me. And it's going to be a problem. Because I don't trust you. Don't trust me. How do we move forward? You are setting yourself up for destruction. No self-control. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? So please, when you are relating with somebody and you find out that every time you are fighting with him about somebody's text you saw on the phone, about pornography he was watching, about a negative interaction he has with other people and all that, and you are fighting to win him, your mumu wear cap. <laughs> the 
This guy is sick. He needs to be cured. But there is no challenge. Please listen to me. Let's settle this issue now. Listen. If you want to marry somebody like that, no problem. Marry him. But please understand that that practice will continue. And when you marry him, accept it and live with it. Don't trouble him. If you trouble him, you're a stupid person. If I were him, I would divorce you. Because you knew my nature before you came. You know I had to chop anyhow. Are you here? If you have my voice, say yes. You knew, you knew me. You knew that everywhere I go, I get one girlfriend. The mind to turn your back, I sleep with your friend. You know that. And then you just were fighting to win me. Some of you saw what I posted the other day. When I said, any man or any person that will marry somebody, a lover that cheated with him or her, eh? you either have discovered the cure for cheating or both of you have discovered we'll cheat along. Because people hardly change. A wedding ring doesn't change you. It only makes you hide it better. They're quiet. They don't want me to talk. Now, before the girl came, you will stay on your bed and be answering the phone and chatting and texting and all of that. Now that you are married, you do it in the toilet. Come on, talk to me. You only hide it better. There's no change. Wedding ring doesn't change people. You say, but we made a vow. We made a vow. The person making a vow to God, does he know God? You're not hearing. It's like in my village, they take a man who doesn't know Juju and say, we're going to swear. He said, let us go. Do you own this land? Yes. Or you swear? The man knows that the juju doesn't know him. He doesn't know the juju. He says, I swear I own the land. And he goes. You say he didn't die. He didn't die because the juju was looking for the man. He didn't find him. <laughs> The person you are trying to marry is not a Christian. He has no fear of God. Please don't continue. If you have my voice, say Yes. Casual sex is not part of the Christian life. And people that developed it earlier, it only takes God to stop them. There are a lot of young girls in church. Please, if you're here, say yes. yes. Young man, please listen to me. If you think that it's only men that cheat on their wives... You are in Adam's generation. Come closer. Come closer. Is anybody hearing me? In fact, get up to David so you can know Bathsheba was there. And then come closer. No, 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 no. What you know, the gear knows. Both of them go university. If you think you can deceive her, you know some of you are engaged now. Engaged to somebody. And you're chatting with another person. And playing games with another person. And you think you are deceiving her. And she's doing her own, thinking she's deceiving you. <laughs> Connie man die. <laughs> Just doing that. Let me tell you one beautiful thing about God. You know what? God has a way of arranging bad people to meet bad people. I'm going to tell you a true story. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? <laughs> my uncle was telling me uh, from my mother's side, the senior brother. And uh, the, the daughter wanted to get married. Hello? And then one person came. The daughter was, I think they were living in Kaduna. One person came from Kaduna and came to warn the father. <laughs> he said... He said, do you know the kind of man that is trying to marry your daughter? 
He said, that man is for one night. That man is this. That man is this. That man is this. And talked and talked. He said, please, oh, that man will kill your daughter. My uncle listened and after that, he was, he listened with seriousness as if he was paying attention. After that, he started laughing and laughing and laughing. The man said, what is it? He said, does the man know the kind of girl I am giving him? Because that girl in that compound, everybody knows her. The, every Arala on this earth, <laughs> she carried for her. There, she can look at you and sell you. The father knows her that this is my daughter. <laughs> he has a key for this man's ear. <laughs> so when the man, he was not laughing. Why you are there thinking you are smart? God is giving you a smarter woman. A smarter man. Wait, you go find out. If you have my voice, say yes. God will never give pears to pigs. He will never take something beautiful and costly and give to somebody who is a waster. If you are somebody who is careless spiritually, you must get a careless wife. You must get a careless husband. I guarantee you that 100%. If it doesn't happen, come and call me. Because God will never give his treasure to trash. If you have my voice, say yes. I'm going so Are you hearing me? So if you want to guarantee a good future, start with preparing yourself. Number three. It is possible to carry a wounded and bitter soul through life because of multiple heartbreaks. It is possible. So please, before you take a journey into casual sex, understand that multiple relationship embarrassment and heartbreaks will give you a bitter and wounded soul. Uh... Young people, are we here? Yeah. I know there are many old people here, but let me talk to young people. Young people, are we here? Yeah. Listen to me. Do you know that every time somebody rejects you or betrays you or hurts you, that something dies inside you? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But can you imagine the number of young people here who have gone through one betrayal? One rejection, one breakup after another. So I'm going through seven, so I'm going through five, so I'm going through four. The wound is packing up. The wound is packing. The wound is packing. The wound is packing. And it's worse with women. You know why? You see, the emotion of a woman and the emotion of a man are not the same. Women are not chorus. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Yes. Women have what we call maternal instinct. Maternal instinct makes a woman believe an unbelievable thing. Maternal, have, okay, let me, let, me, let me break it down in a way you'll get it. Have you ever seen a mother looking at the son that's an armed robber? If you tell her, we are going to arrest your son, she will start begging. Don't touch him, don't touch him. The father will say, slap him, kill him. Useless boy. What I'm saying, is that true? So you say, this boy, this boy is an embarrassment. The mother says, hey, don't do anything. It is his race that corrupt him. And the boy is the chairman of corruption. That's his friend, he's his friend, his bad friend, bad friend. That's how women think. And that's why women can get into a very useless relationship and be managing it and be hoping that it will get better. You tell them this is not working. They say, well, we are praying. We are trusting God. It will change. God is on the throne. <laughs> if you are still with me, say yes. yes. Young man, young woman, please listen to me. Don't put yourself out there where you are getting wounded continually. Rejection brings wounds. Are you with me? If you are here, say yes. yes. Please look up here. Young lady, please look up now. 
when a young boy says to a young lady, I love you, the young lady is thinking wedding dress. The young man is thinking undressing you. You have to understand that the language is different. I love you, what it means to you and what it means to him are not the same. So, he pets you, he plays with you, you move on together and then he's able to get to sleep with you. And then you think that sleeping with you consummates that love. When a child eats what is keeping him awake and goes to bed. The moment he has opened you up, you are no longer a mystery to him. The next day he moves on. You call him, he doesn't pick. You relate with him, he doesn't give you the attention he used to give you. You are now begging him for attention. You now want him to get, you know, play and talk and joke and jeez like he used to do. And he doesn't do it again. And you are feeling bad. What's going on? What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't understand language. So you get angry. You get bitter and all of that. But because you didn't process it well, you meet another person. He says, I love you. Now, this time you give both your body and your money. In case it's because you didn't give money that the other one walked away. You are not hearing me. And you still go through the same thing. By the time five or so, seven persons have taken advantage of you. And the worst part of it, a lot of them are in church talking in tongue. Your inner man dies. Your excitement dies. Your trust on people dies. Please, what I'm saying, does it happen? And everything good about you begins to die. Please be careful. Because you can be so wounded that by the time you are set to marry, we're only trying to manage carcass. That's why when, many times when people get married, they start hurting the man based on what somebody did to them. They start suspecting you, mistreating you, always angry, always bitter, always insulting, always this, because men have done that to her. So she will take a precious man and turn him into a bully. The same thing happens to men. If you help me say yes. yes. Men, their own is I spent money on her. 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 Well, the little money you have, I bet keep her more. Keep them. Keep them. In this church, I've said it before. So let me say it publicly again so that I can go viral again. They say, Pastor, is encouraging immorality. Let me say it again. The one you did before, who encouraged you? <laughs> is anybody hearing me? Anybody training you in school as a young girl sleeping with you the sleeping has paid for the training. When you graduate, you don't owe him marriage. You were working for your schooling. So all of you Ikoku traders, Let me settle this case. Are you hearing me? So please stop the nonsense. If you are going to relate to the young girl and you are going to invest in her to marry her, honor her body first. Treat her like a child of God. And then we can trust God that she will treat you like a responsible man. Am I clear? Let's go to the next thing. Oh, our time is up. If I continue now, you complain again.
We have to close. Uh, praise the Lord. Let me just drop this before I close. You see, and I'll just say this so that we can continue our discussion later. Keeping away from sexual rebellion is from two things. Number one, the grace of God. Number two, making personal boundaries. Are you with me? First of all, is the grace of God. Somebody say the grace of God. Can I say the grace of God? The reason we talk about the grace of God is because everybody goes through temptation. How many people? How many people? How many people? Anybody that tells you his body know they move in the impotent. It's not anointing. It's impotence. The way you are looking at me. There is no human with blood flowing in his vein that the blood know they reach there. Ask him when he woke up in the morning, the blood to get there. So the blood, they get there. So you feel something. The way you are looking at me. Are you hearing me? There are some of you that came here since morning. All you've been doing is looking around. He said, Kai, that girl, oh. Kai, that girl. Now, wow. Now, wow. This Bible says, I had Bible, oh. I had Bible, oh. This Bible self. Mm. Bible self. If not for Bible now, I'm going to for here something. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You know, I used to think it's only men that think like that. One day I asked my wife, Does women feel for sex? She started laughing. <laughs> he said, Sometimes more than men. You are not hearing me. All the young girls there that are acting like they don't feel anything. <laughs> when you pass, they look at your body. They say, Kai. <laughs> Anytime you pass in church and the young lady, they say, Boo shakata. <laughs> it's not Holy Ghost. It's not Holy Ghost. You are not hearing me. <laughs> Do you notice in church when choir is singing, some brothers go to Bashata Kopa. No, be Holy Ghost. They don't see the girl, they're looking nice there. Holy Ghost. Are you still here? But you see, the good thing about it is this that if you trust the grace of God, if you take the Bible as the word of God, and you trust the grace of God, God will give you grace. No matter how badly you have fallen, you can recover. The addiction can break in your life. A wholesome desire can rise in you. And you can live for God. But beyond that, put boundaries around your life that hinders you from messing up. If you are with me, say yes. yes put boundaries. Are you here? Yes, uh, are you here? I now know why some of the fathers in the faith don't use WhatsApp. I now know. Because a lot of people send you all kinds of trash on WhatsApp. They can post any kind of video, any kind of nonsense. And those things have a lot of corrupting influences. If you have my voice, say yes. But many of you young people, please listen to me. Why we say use social media? Understand that social media can be damaging to your soul. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? They are the ones that manage my social media. They see all the things people try to send me on Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, and all of that. I know you see my Instagram page. Believe me, my phone, my iPad, there's none of them that has Instagram. There's nothing you saw I posted. <laughs> it's only on Facebook that many times I post, and then I take it to Instagram. You're not hearing me. No, I have that time. 
Why? Because I know there are demons in Instagram. <laughs> you are not hearing me. So we'll try to avoid the demons there. There are people who are hunting for souls. Do you know there are a lot of people that come into your messenger only to destroy your destiny? You start a chat with somebody you have never met before. And then before you know it, your life begins to spiral out of control. Please be careful. If you help me, say yes. yes. Be careful. Some foolish people in church send me some very funny, stupid things on Facebook Messenger. The only time they knew that others were seeing what they were sending was when I mentioned it on the pulpit here. They thought I was the one seeing all of them. Once in a while, they call my attention that somebody needs help, and I come and answer them. There are somebody, they, sometimes they even post it to my WhatsApp. Papa, somebody send this message. I go there and I answer. And I say, okay, no problem. Give this instruction. Give this instruction. But for me to be sitting down chatting with you on Facebook Messenger, are they crazy? If you notice, you know some people are foolish enough. They say, Papa, send me a friend's invite at my level. Send your friend invite. Who you be? <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here today? You see, some people don't understand who they are. Am I wasting my time with you? Take yourself away from compromising things. Praise the Lord. Take yourself away. The young man say, ah, come and see me, so, so, and so, please. Number one, you don't him, know him enough to stay with him in a place like that. You don't know him enough. Secondly, he can be a rapist. Are you with me? Everybody I know that was raped, apart from those in armed robbery and all of that, everybody I know that was raped, was raped by people they were acquainted with. The man said, they just gist in church. They do all kinds of... I told you a story here some time ago. Huh? When I was receiving newcomers, I went to see them at the back. They received them. I want to pray for them. And when I closed my eye, I just said, there's somebody here. You were raped on Thursday. And your mind is so messed up, but you are here now. Please, I'm praying for you now. God is going to heal your heart. After this, can you see me at the back? These are the people that came for the first time on church. So I walked into the office. That day, a bank came to ask us to give us their account. So the, the manager, they came because they've been trying to reach me and they couldn't reach me. So they decided to come to church on Sunday. So after service, in between my counseling, they can see me. So when they called for newcomers, they came out and I waited on them and they went over there. So I came in there. I didn't know they were bank people. I just came in there, prayed for everybody, and came out. And then they called the accountant, can we see the pastor? And so they came. When they came, I received them. I talked to them, and I explained to them about how our process here works, about banking, and all of that. As they were leaving, the bank manager, as they left, the bank manager came back again. I said, Pastor, sorry, one of my people says she wants to see you. So I said, okay, this beautiful girl comes in and sits down. Are you with me? I said, what is it? He said, when you came in there, you said somebody was raped on Thursday. He said, I was raped on Thursday. What happened? She worships in a church, an Orthodox church, near, uh, what do they call it? Amadi, uh, what is it? Huh? CFC, yes. One big church there near CFC. And she's in their prayer band. They came to Bible, whatever, the Bible, something they do. They finish. And then there's this young man that joins, that is with them. Very regular, very committed. And they've been greeting, but they've never been close. They just chat and all of that. That day she finished, she came from the office, finished, and wanted to go back. And was trekking down that road, going toward where you have uh, what the, uh, uh, Winner's Chapel. Just passing through that area. And a young man just called and said, uh, was walking beside, walking behind, and just walked up to her and they started talking. And said, uh, he says, you know, I live in this place. He said, oh, okay. 
He said, why don't you come in and you're coming from work. Just come in and take a drink before you go. She said, I didn't think about it. I never imagined that this brother, this nice brother, always committed, was an evil person. They walked into the house. It wasn't as if he even made an advance. She said, the moment I entered the room at the parlor and sat down, he just came up, walked to the door, locked the door, put the key on his something, went into the room and came out with a knife and so undressed. He said, it wasn't like he even asked me. He said, I liked him. It's not even that he asked me, let's have a rela- begin a relationship. He just went in, came out with a knife and so undressed. Finished raping me and told me to get out. They came from prayer meeting. So brothers and sisters, while you are trying to throw away your life, be careful. When somebody says, come and see me somewhere, pick a good sister and go. Pick a good friend and go. It saves you had I known. Not everybody clapping hands here is a child of God. Some were vomited by demons. Don't let any one of them mess up your destiny. If you had my voice, I hear you, sir. Be careful. Set boundaries in your engagement. Decide where you meet and where not to meet. Your prayer meeting together is not in his one room bedroom. He said, we are going to meet together. You know, we are fasting on Wednesday and uh, on Thursday. Uh, we are meeting in my house. So he said, okay. You come on Thursday. You finish fasting and all of that. You come. Let us pray. Katorabasha. Get a door. Shandada, shandada, shandada. The next thing you know, you are waking up from the bed. And you are saying shandada, shandada. <laughs> it's three o'clock, I have to send you home. All I'm begging you today is this. Be careful. Set boundaries. Learn to say no. And please listen to me, every young man here. Whenever a gear says no, no is no. No is not maybe. Anything from the moment of no is called rep. Even if she was undressed before she said no, no means no. Whether her breast came out to Her stomach was out. The way she was dressed doesn't matter. When a lady says no, no means no. No No is not maybe. No is not if you touch me well. No is not if you plead more. No is not if you hold me hard. No means no. Any moment beyond that no is called rep. And can I make a promise to you? In this house... I have never once forgiven rape and I will not start today. There's not one person I had a report about that we didn't make police arrangement. I know of a brother's case. We had the whole village, the chief of the village, everybody came to Potaka to beg and I told him, keep him locked up until he goes for trial. One month passed, two months passed, three months passed. No. We didn't die. Their threat didn't change anything. No means no. If you get accused, you will be the one defending yourself. So while you're explaining, she consented, she undressed and all of that, I will hold you with the police until you explain well. By the time you finish explaining, he has three months. So, don't toy with any gear unless the report didn't get to me. Your whole village will contribute money to bail you. Not in this house. 
If you think it's an empty thread, try it. If you think so, unless the report didn't get to my table, every money we have here will invest. Every connection we have will invest it to make sure you pay. So you have to understand that. I have never forgiven once. I won't start today. So there's no explanation. Any explanation you have, you must be explaining it from a waiting trial. Are we clear? So please understand. No means no. No.